Swayam Prabha Digital India Educated India Hello friends, today we are going to start a new topic that is justice and we are going to have four lecture on this um, uh, topic uh, which is justice and um, the reason for uh, focusing more on this concept is um, not just the uh, centrality or in a sense um, uh, dynamic uh, in, uh, understanding or inner uh, differentiation between different um, meaning, interpretation or conceptualization of this term justice, but we will also see how justice is uh, related to some of the other political values we have uh, discussed so far. So, for example, the value of political equality or the question of liberty and also the rights. So, we will see some of the uh, normative concerns and the issues. Uh, that we have discussed while discussing these concepts like uh, liberty, equality and rights, we will see the similar uh, kind of uh, problem or contestations are also there when we try to theorize what is justice. So, justice is something which we all want. Uh, we think that ideal life or ideal society is a just society or a just life. So, uh, justice is the uh, defining characteristic of a society, of an individual. So, the justness or the due process what we call is somewhat related to uh, this uh, procedural uh, notion of justice where we want a rule which should be applicable for everyone without any discrimination. So, that is a kind of uh, uh, due process or natural theory of justice which tries to give everyone equal or similar uh, opportunities. Now, however, on the other hand we also know the hierarchies in the societies or the discrimination that is uh, uh, prevailing in the societies or the domination or the subordination that is uh, there, the inequalities that exist in society. So, in that kind of given situation how to ensure that um, justice is not only uh, argued for or defined, but also effectively achieved in that society. So, there is a kind of substantive notion of justice, which we will try to um, uh, understand over the course of uh, this uh, four lecture on justice and also different conception of justice say from Rawls a theory of justice to his critique by Robert Nozick and the feminist uh, critique of justice uh, as well. So, uh, we will uh, try to understand this concept of uh, justice through different ideological or, or through different parameters and also its relationship with other political values. Now, today what we are going to do is to begin this uh, topic by understanding what is um, justice and why it, it is understood as a really, um, distributive concept. So, um, uh, this um, we are going to discuss today and then we will discuss also if it is so, that means if justice is a distributive concept, then what should be the ground of that distribution and why to distribute and when the distribution is regarded as just or unjust, who got, uh, got to decide which principle of distribution or redistribution are just or uh, unjust or so on. So, these are some of the issues which we will uh, uh, discuss today. So, uh, the first uh, thing we need to understand about uh, justice that it is a normative concern. So, there are moral, normal, uh, normative issue that is 
involved while discussing about the justice. And this uh, normative or moral issue that is involved in the question of justice is not something which um, really calls for any kind of disagreements or contestations. So, uh, there is a kind of normative moral consensus about uh, justice. So, the desire for justice and uh, the aspiration for having a just society or a just uh, social, moral, political order is something which is not new and there is very few contestation over these aspiration or desire for justice. However, the contestations or the differences emerge when we actually try to um, unravel what this justice is all about. What does it mean to be a just society? What does it mean to have a just law or just order? So, in that sense, justice also uh, leads to the uh, question of distribution. So, essentially justice as a normative concept is also a read, uh, distribute, uh, distributive uh, uh, concept in nature and this distribution, the method, uh, the procedure or the mechanism for uh, distribution makes the whole uh, conception or interpretation of justice a bit contentious issue. So, what should be the ground, what should be the mechanism and the procedure for distribution and redistribution is something which is uh, contentious. And the reason being primarily because the society has limited resources. So, if a society has enough resources to meet the needs and requirements of the every member of uh, that particular society, then there is no uh, contestation. The contestation emerge when there is scarcity of resources and all the members and their needs cannot be fulfilled. So, then on what principle and on what grounds such distribution should be done and that makes the question of justice a distributive con uh, concept and also then essentially contested uh, concepts in terms of the methods, approaches and procedure of such distribution. So, uh, let us uh, begin with that uh, this concept justice refers to basically the fairness which is an attribute of law. So, justice as fairness is based on the principle of non-discrimination or without any differences. So, law as you know in the positivist tradition applies to everyone without any uh, discrimination. So, uh, justice as a normative concept talk about fairness. Now, fairness we will discuss is easily said than done. So, suppose if a society is unequal and then you apply equal law in that society, will the outcome would be fair? Obviously, the answer is no, because if you treat unequal equally, the outcome will never be uh, uh, just or fair. So, then what you require is to treat people differently according to their needs, their requirement, their condition and then provide to them a kind of level field or a kind of uh, equal opportunity and let them then excel it and still if some inequality prevails, then that equality is acceptable because the that depends on their merit, their individual efforts and so on. So, uh, the fairness is something which is not just about treating everyone equally but also treating uh, different people, different groups, different communities depending upon their conditions, their uh, social or cultural or the economic backgrounds and so on. So, the justice is about fairness which is much more than merely equal treatment and it is an attributes of law and how such uh, differences or differential treatment can also lead to fair result that we will discuss as we move on to discuss a theory of justice by John Rawls. So, it is about fairness as an attribute of law. Justice is essentially a distributive concept. Distributive concept means it is uh, about distribution of resources and as I have said as a moral normative concern, there is very less contestation over this term justice, but it necessarily inherently implies a redistribution or distribution of resources. 
and the mechanism and the procedure of such distribution and redistribution makes this whole conceptualization of justice a bit contentious, a bit contested concept. So, it is essentially a distributive concept because it talks about distribution of resources, who should get what and on what grounds. And if uh, the amount or the quantity they get are justified or not and how we can justify those uh, allocation of resources to different sections of society and so on. So, these are some of the issues which make the uh, notion of justice very contentious uh, concept. So, it is essentially a distributive concept which talks about allocation of resources or distribution of resources in the society. So, it is about impartiality or unbiasedness in distributing goods and services to people in the society. It refers to a fair distribution of goods in the society. So, that is about the fair distribution of society. We will discuss in a moment what should be the ground for such distribution. But here we need to understand that justice as a concept is about a distribution of resources. So, essentially it is a distributive concept. Now, um, if you look at this urge, the moral normative urge for justice which is not new to the modern society, which is also in many ways uh, equal and simultaneously unequal society in terms of social, economic conditions of the people and the opportunities of uh, different peoples uh, depending upon their birth, their social, cultural and economic background and so on. So, um, earlier in Greek philosophy to focus on this concept of justice and Plato pointed out that ideal state would be a just state. So, justice for Plato is the defining feature of an ideal society or an ideal state. And he regarded uh, justice along with temperance, wisdom and courage as the four key virtue of that society. So, for uh, Plato justice is something which is uh, defining uh, feature of uh, uh, a society or a just society. Now, Plato also make a distinction between um, um, uh, different uh, sections in the society. So, Plato believed in the hierarchy, that means uh, different classes in the society are fit to do different kinds of work. And if they are doing what they are fit to do or they are capable of doing, then that society can be regarded as a just society. So, essentially the assumption here is justice is about giving everyone his or her due. Now, what is his or her due is something which we can debate and discuss and we will uh, discuss as we move on to um, the next lecture and so on. But uh, for Plato as well uh, uh, also uh, discussing about justice in say uh, 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 in the Greek tradition uh, is arguing about justice as a principle is giving everyone's due and his understanding of giving everyone due is not like modern idea of treating everyone equally. Uh, Plato believed in the social hierarchy or the three uh, section and uh, the philosophers, uh, uh, the warrior and the artisans or peasants, they should do what they are capable of doing. And if they are able to do what they are capable of doing, the outcome or the, uh, uh, the society would be a just society for Plato. Now, Aristotle came up with the concept of justice, but unlike Plato who believed in the hierarchy and so on, Aristotle believed that justice could be attained through the prevalence of equality or in an equilibrium society. So, Aristotle was more, more uh, about uh, creating a society which is uh, equal. So, one of the conception that Aristotle has is that um, in an ideal polity, everyone should be able to govern and being governed in turn. So, the capability to rule should be available to everyone and not just for few. So, uh, Aristotle conception of justice is much more broader, certainly egalitarian uh, than the Plato. However, in both of uh, them, of course, in Plato there is the communism of wives and property 
uh, thereby there is some uh, amount of egalitarianism there also. But by and large, women or slaves or certain other sections of society are remain outside the sphere of uh, this uh, justice uh, or uh, the um, justice for them is about the citizens or the citizens by default mean male citizen and so on. So, their conception of justice remains somewhat limited, but nonetheless it is uh, on the basis of this principle of giving everyone's due and what are those dues are uh, differently uh, conceptualized by Plato and Aristotle. In the modern times, the concept of justice gains prominence during the renaissance and the industrial revolution in Europe, where uh, there was the beginning of new discourse about individual government based on the consent of the people, uh, government having limited role and must protect certain rights of the individual that we have uh, discussed in the previous topic. So, in that time which kind of government is a just government or legitimate government and so on. So, that discourse leads to this conceptualization about justice as a, a normative distributive concept. So, the concept of distributive justice broadly provide the basis for distribution of just benefits and services to individuals, groups and communities in the ideal society. So, the justice as a concept talks about the redistribution or distribution of wealth in the society um, to different groups, to different uh, societies, uh, to different uh, communities and so on. Now, what should be the basis of such uh, distribution? So, there are many bases for the distribution of resources such as need, desert, freedom or choice, maximization of utility, equality and least disadvantage. So, in, in order to ensure uh, justice in a society, it is necessary to distribute the resources on the grounds of these above mentioned value. And now, we are going to discuss each one of uh, uh, such values to ensure uh, justice uh, is not just uh, something as a mere moral or normative concept, but it also about creating a society which is more just. So, um, you remember any society at any given point of time has some inbuilt tensions or contradictions in terms of the interest of the um, uh, different sections of the society. Now, to uh, whole politics operates on the basis of this principle who gets what, uh, because the uh, resources are limited. In the uh, redistribution of the resources, there are cert some uh, debates about making the society uh, more equal or more just. So, think about uh, the Greek uh, times when there was some sections of society totally excluded from the participation in the public life, say women children, slave uh, and so on. Now, to a society in 21st century when we want every uh, member, every single member, uh, the assumptions being that uh, having same uh, and equal moral worth must have certain rights and given opportunity to participate in the public political process. Now, this very assumption is also radical or transformative in many sense. In the actual reality, there exist some inequalities and so on, but the normative level at the theoretical level no longer the hierarchies or exclusion are justified on the grounds of tradition, on the grounds of birth, on the grounds of religion and so on. Now, the hierarchies of all, all kind are so between male and female and so on, we uh, find that those hierarchies are increasingly challenged now. So, now to ensure that we just do not aspire for or desire justice, but we also ensure, we also create the condition in which everyone has the just or the fair chances to progress, to develop and so on. Now, that requires ensuring that everyone should have equal opportunity or the equal resources or at least some 
primary basic uh, goods or resources. Now, how to ensure that everyone should have uh, resources or how to distribute the resources of the society or the state. So, there are some principles which can be a guide for such distribution and all. So, one is the idea of need. Need is like um, the requirement of different people in the society. So, it believes that distribution of benefits and services should be made keeping in mind the needs or requirements of every individual in a society. So, th uh, there is a need to have a minimum set of resources to be made available to everybody. So, that is a kind of equal principle, but the needs principle talks about that uh, in the society different individual has uh, different needs and uh, the distribution of uh, resources should be done on the basis of the needs of that individual or, uh, or a family. So, suppose a family of four need different kind of rooms, uh, different uh, quantity of grains than a family of two or a sick man's requirement for the medical care will be different from uh, the medical requirements of a healthy man or uh, uh, the requirement of a adult is different from the requirement of a child. So, uh, this kind of distribution of justice um, argue that uh, the distribution of wealth should be done on the basis of the requirements or the needs of different individuals in the society. So, one of the famous uh, Marxist uh, maxim is that to each according to his um, capacity to each according to his needs. That means, everyone should contribute according to his capability or his skills, but rewards should be given on the basis of his or her, her needs. So, in his ideal uh, conception of communism, to uh, communism he uh, conceptualized a society where distribution of the resources would be based on the needs of the individual. However, the individual will participate in them. Um, uh, uh, society or in the uh, economy according to his capability or his skill. The problem here is in this idea of needs, uh, so the need principle of distribution is possible when society had enough resources to meet the needs of all the uh, section of the society. So, the, uh, that uh, create a kind of problem for the distribution of the wealth. The other uh, more convincing or somewhat more just principle of distribution is regarded as the principle of desert. Desert basically meaning merit or so uh, it refers to the individual efforts or merit which help him or her to earn additional income or extra income and he she deserved that extra income which may be relatively higher than the rest or the other and he she deserve to save or keep that extra income. So, the desert principle basically uh, means that the reward should be based on the capability or the skill of the individual. So, if the individual is putting extra effort, is innovative and willing to take risk or entrepreneur, so naturally uh, he or she should have more uh, reward. And that is uh, perfectly justified because uh, it is result of his or her um, uh, merit or um, efforts and so on. So, uh, the second principle of reward is based on this idea of um, what is called desert or merit in the society. So, the distribution of resources should be based on the merit of individual and not his or her uh, needs. The third principle is about freedom or choice. That means, any pattern of distribution of benefits and services should be based on the choice made by human beings or it must be an outcome of the choice of people make in their lives to lead a better livelihood and so on. So, the choice principle is closer to the libertarian ideal of meritocracy or distribution of rewards and resources where it is understood that individuals should be given freedom or liberty to take decisions or make choice. And if uh, the individuals are 
provided the condition for making choice or to take decision, then if the outcome of such decisions or choice are different or unequal, that should not be a problem and there should not be uh, a, an, an attempt to emphasize on equalizing the reward and uh, so on. So, the uh, focus is about providing the individual with choice or the freedom to make decisions and once they are given those conditions of uh, making choice or freedom to uh, make decision, then the outcome of uh, such decisions or freedom uh, of choice should be acceptable to everyone. The third is about maximization of uh, utility that is the principle of uh, utilitarianism which talks about it is necessary to understand happiness, pleasure, welfare or success or inner satisfaction of individuals and so they should try to derive maximum utility or benefit from the services provided to them. So, this ideal of uh, redistribution is uh, on the principle that distribution or redistribution of resources should be based on the principle which will lead to maximization of the uh, 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 happiness or the welfare or pleasure of the maximum number in the society. Similarly, it is for the individual. If such distribution is uh, maximizing his or her individual happiness, welfare and pleasure, then such uh, redistribution is just. So, it's, it works for the state or the community or the society on the one hand. It also works equally for the individual. If such distribution is maximizing the happiness, pleasure or welfare of the individual or the society, then it should be uh, the just principle of distribution. The principle of equality is based on this formal idea that uh, the distribution of benefits and services must be made equally, so that they are accessible to everyone in equal manner and it provides equilibrium in society. So, this principle of equality as I have discussed can be understood with this idea that should we treat uh, two individuals or coming from different um, backgrounds with different set of uh, characteristics equally. And if we do so, will the outcome be a just outcome or a fair outcome and so on. So, the equality principle which believes that everyone should be given uh, benefits and services which should be equal and same to the rest of uh, the individual. In that way, the society will uh, be a more equal society and so on. But this kind of uh, focus on equality in the formal sense do not really transform into creating a uh, egalitarian society, where uh, uh, the uh, different uh, groups or different societies are not on the same uh, level. They do not have the same level of resources or same uh, uh, opportunities. Now, in the absence of uh, the same or equal uh, resources or opportunity, if the laws treat them equally, then outcome will never be the just outcome and therefore, this equality principle is not always a valid uh, principle of um, justice and so on. Now, the third is uh, last one is the least disadvantaged um, principle which believes that distribution of resources should take great and special care of the poor, illiterate and the least will of sections in the society to make distributive justice sensitive to the specific needs and requirements of the different groups in the society. So, uh, we will uh, discuss this two ideal of to treat everyone equally that is the basic premise of um, uh, justice or uh, uh, fairness and so on. And the idea of how we can deviate from this equal principle. So, uh, the ideal uh, commonsensical understanding of justice would be treat everyone equally, distribute the resources of the society or the state equally among everyone. That would be uh, the just uh, distribution. So, that is the kind of um, uh, commonsensical understanding of justice as a distributive concept. 
but it is insensitive to the different needs, different status, different conditions of living of different sections of the society and their needs. So, therefore, uh, uh, as uh, for example, in, uh, in Indian society, we have Dalits or women or uh, religious or ethnic minorities, they live uh, or their threats or their condition of existence are not similar to everyone else. Now, if the Indian state have the single uh, equal or the same principle or laws applied to everyone, the society will remain hierarchical. The condition of existence will remain differential from each other inequalities will prevail. Now, to create equality, to ensure justice, what is required is a differential treatment depending upon the um, uh, legitimacy or justification for such deviation. So, this principle of equality and when and where uh, deviation from such equality to justify difference principle is uh, justified or not, we will discuss when we will discuss Rawls theory of justice. So, these are some of the premises for uh, distribution of wealth and resources in the society and any society that tends to create um, its society more just, more egalitarian follow one of these values or uh, a set of these values. So, equality with least dis disadvantage or merit with uh, needs and so on. Now, another aspect to be taken into consideration while discussing about distributive justice is that where these distribution of benefits and services are taking place and whether these are provided to everyone in a just manner or not. So, the actual implementation of uh, justice or distribution of resources requires that where these uh, distributions are done, who are the beneficiaries, are uh, these uh, distribution based on certain just principle or not. So, the concept of distributive justice emphasizes upon the fact that such benefits and services should be provided by various political institutions through laws and policy made by the state. So, a state has a role to, to play. Here is the difference which we need to uh, take into account is the procedural notion of justice. So, the procedural notion of justice or substantive notion of justice we will discuss in some detail in the next lecture, but here perhaps it is necessary to understand that uh, the justice and implementation of justice is possible by uh, laws and a state has a role to pass or enact a law which should be just. Now, uh, this uh, enactment of law may or may not treat everyone equally. It may be unjust or it may be uh, just as well. The political philosophers tries to argue for a law which will uh, lead to just outcome. Now, the philosophers who believe in the law itself and uh, as a, a mechanism for ensuring justice in the society are regarded as, as someone who argue for the procedural notion of justice. So, they argue if laws are just, the implementation of it will lead to just outcome. However, the substantive notion of justice talks about not merely the procedure or the laws, but also the outcome of that just law. So, there uh, these difference we will discuss in the next law. So, here the point is the distribution of the resources is provided by the political institution through the laws and policies made by the state. So, the entire political, social, legal and economic framework is available to provide benefits and services to individuals or citizens of the state. So, in the redistribution of the resources, the whole mechanism of the state, uh, its institutions, laws and policies are involved in the distribution. Now, whether that distribution is just or not requires certain criteria to be met, whether that uh, distribution follows some of the values which we have just discussed and also whether some or few or many are excluded from such distributions or not. So, it is necessary to introspect the roles of every institution 
or these frameworks while distributing resources. So, the existing structure that means, the uh, political, social, legal and economic structure in the society. Now, we constantly need to introspect or assess the role of every institution or these frameworks while distributing resources, benefits and services to individual in order to ensure a fair or just distribution. While doing so, they should follow some moral principle and this moral and normative principles make the distribution of resources or the principle on which the distribution is based a contentious issue. And there we see how different political philosophers or um, uh, intellectuals argues about different principle of justice. So, starting from John Rawls to Robert Nozick to feminist critique and uh, uh, many others we will discussed in the following lectures. So, this uh, distribution of resources requires assessment or introspection of every institution or framework that is uh, prevailing in the society. Now, while introspecting the role of these institution or the framework, we may or may not continue with those frameworks or institution. We want some new institution or we may uh, radically alter the existing structure of institution and framework for the redistribution of resources to make it more just or make uh, it more fair and so on. So, the political process that make an equal, just or fair distribution possible is different in different societies. So, different societies have different political mechanism for the distribution of resources which will be just or fair. But in a democratic society, it should be made on the basis of protection, preservation of ethos of equality, rights and justice. So, the necessary moral normative concern that guides the distribution of resources in a democratic uh, society or a state is the protection or preservation of equality, rights and justice. Although the political mechanism is something which plays a significant role in the redistribution it may vary from society to society, but in a democratic society, it must be based on the principle of this protection and preservation of equality, uh, rights and justice. So, the concept of distributive justice has many dimension to it. It refers to many kind of uh, distribution. First is distribution of employment opportunities to provide welfare, to maximize utility, income and so on. So, the distributive justice is about all these uh, things, employment opportunities or uh, equality of opportunities as we uh, will discuss. So, employment opportunity or the welfare mechanism such as medical care, health care, uh, pension, social security schemes and so on. The maximization of utility and income is also part of this distributive concept of justice. So, what matters in such distribution is to consider as to who are actually benefiting from the distribution of the services of the state. So, uh, the problem with uh, uh, distribution is at the two level. First is at the theoretical legal level, who is uh, going to benefit from the policies of the state or redistributive policies of the state. So, the law itself poses certain limit or certain um, uh, um, definition about the beneficiaries of uh, its policies and all. The second is about the implementation. So, when the laws are implemented, so the chances are those who are intended to be benefited by these policies are not the actual beneficiary. But those who are already better off or privileged or resourceful are getting extra benefit out of these uh, policies of the state. So, the distributive of policies of the state talks about both at the theoretical level to ensure the rightful or those who are uh, actually required the benefit of the state should be uh, provided resources and also um, those who are um, um, better off or those who are already uh, uh, privileged, they should not uh, 
manipulate uh, this, uh, uh, these provisions for uh, uh, their benefit. So, the uh, principle of justice argue for uh, creating a law or formulating a policy which will be just for everyone and also about its implementation. So, the government should be sensible and res responsible enough while making such policies and laws and it can also make changes in the already existing policies to make it more just and to provide these services such as education, legal, uh, legal uh, services, health to everyone in the society. So, the government constantly tries to formulate uh, or to make the implementation of earlier policy if it is just to more effective, to more economical, uh, to target the real beneficiary of uh, these policies and programs and it can also uh, formulate new policies or new uh, um, programs for the welfare of every uh, citizen in the state. So, the society can be adaptable to these policy if they are really beneficial and meant for their welfare and progress. So, society has a choice to make whether they follow or not follow a particular policy for the redistribution of resources. So, the redistribution of resources is something which can be constantly altered, modified depending upon the new requirements of the society. So, a society may follow the earlier uh, method of redistribution, but it can also um, follow the new method of redistribution depending upon whether that new mechanism of redistribution is in the benefit or the welfare of everyone in the society or not. Now, the many uh, writers and philosophers approved of such moral principles. So, uh, the distribution of the resources requires some moral or normative concern on the part of a state or the society. So, society believes that everyone should be treated equally. So, that is a kind of moral normative judgment. Now, society may also believe that since our society is not equal, so let us uh, uh, give preferential treatment to someone. So, we call it reservation and so on. So, reservation deviate from this uh, ideal of equal treatment, yet it deviation is justified in the name of creating a level playing field or giving equal op opportunity to everyone or preferential treatment therefore, is justified. So, these are some of the normative moral concerns which society as a whole as a collective uh, entity decides and then justified certain distributive mechanism. So, uh, distributive principles are recognized for providing moral principle or a moral guidance for making such choice. So, for example, Rawls difference principle. So, Rawls theory of justice, one of the principle of uh, justice is difference principle argues for making changes to the existing basic structure of the society that can improve the condition of the worse of and make various prospects and opportunity better for everyone in the society. So, the Rawls theory of justice talks about creating a more equal and just society. In creating a more equal and just society, he also justified the difference principle on the condition of uh, that it will improve the condition of the worse of uh, in the society or the least disadvantage in the society and th thereby overall it lead to uh, create a society which will be more equal and more just. So, the question of morality Morality is deeply embedded in the question or a discussion of on justice, which we will uh, come again and again when we will discuss different theories of justice in the next class. So, there are certain methods while making distributive justice. The method is necessary to make a choice out of different principles. So, at any given point of time, there can be many multiple uh, options. So, for example, on this question of whether we should give a reservation to the historically and socio-economically disadvantaged section in Indian society or not. Now, there are uh, many arguments in uh, favor of such kind of mechanism, but there are also arguments against such, uh, such uh, uh, mechanism. Now, so at any given point of time on the issue of redistribution, you have multiple uh, principles or uh, mechanism argued for uh, the redistribution. Now, which uh, principle or mechanism is regarded as most suitable 
or more uh, just or which principle will lead to the just outcome is something that a society needs to decide collectively. So, it requires the moral uh, or the normative judgment on the part of society as a whole also. So, the distributive principle in terms of which principle will lead to what kind of a distribution of benefits and services to individual. Philosophers like John Rawls use the method of wide reflective equilibrium. This we are going to discuss in the next class, I will not discuss now. So, uh, reflective equilibrium which we will discuss in the uh, next class. So, many philosophers argue that a democratic process or methods of distributive justice is necessary for sustaining a fair and equal distribution of resources in the society. So, uh, the broader consensus about uh, distribution of resources is a it requires the uh, moral or normative judgment on the part of the society. B, uh, the democratic process or method of redistributive justice that means, which does not favor or does is not partial to anyone even if it serves the differential needs of different section of the society. So, many philosophers argue that a democratic process or method of a redistributive uh, or distributive justice is necessary for sustaining a fair and equal distribution of resources in the society. So, these are some of the contentious issue that is uh, related to the idea of um, justice as a distributive concept. In the next class, we will discuss a procedural and substantive notion of justice and also uh, Rawls theory of justice as fairness. Topics that we have discussed today you can refer to some of these books like Rajiv Bhargav and Ashok Acharya, Political Theory and also Hoffman and Paul Graham, Introduction to Political Theory. Then Katriona McKinnon, you can uh, refer to from Issues in Political Theory and Robert Nozick, Distributive Justice, you can also refer to understand some of these issues which we have discussed. So, uh, that is all for today. Thank you for listening. Thanks.